morning church indeed God is faithful isn't he so what better way to appreciate our one true God than to praise and worship him let me encourage you with this verse from Hebrews 12 it says therefore let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we are given another opportunity to bring. Father, all glory and honor belongs to your name. Church, let us worship the Lord. Yes, Lord, the joy of the Lord is our strength.
all of us is familiar with the story of Moses 
and the burning bush. We've been hearing that story. If, if you've been a believer for the longest time, we know the story in Exodus 3 where Moses encountered the, the glory of God through a burning bush. God even told him to take off his sandals because he's not even worthy to step closer. But when we look at verse 9, the Lord says there, I have heard the cry of my people. And I have seen their oppression. And I'm going to take them out from the land of Egypt. And bring them into a land flowing with milk and honey. Church, I believe that is the reminder of the Lord for us. We will be singing a relatively new song. This, this is a song from the past. You know, sino bang mga nakaabot pa dito ng mga planet shakers time. Maybe most of us here are familiar. We will, we're going to sing the song Healer. Healer. And yes, we know that God heals. Yes, we know. And it is written in the Gospels that by, uh, through the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. How many of us believe that He heals? How many of us believe that He is healing? How many of us believe that He will continue to heal? Amen. But church, like what God says to Moses, He is not even worthy to step closer to the presence of God. We too are not. But because of His Son, Jesus, we have been reconciled. And with that reconciliation is the abundance of healing. With all eyes closed, come on, with all eyes closed. Hearts opened. Dinami kayo nakikita from here kasi ang daming spotlight. But definitely the Lord sees. Like what He said to His people. I have seen your oppression. With all eyes closed. Kahit ngayon lang po, walang cheating. Oh. Kahit ngayon lang, wag po tayo mandaya. Just... Just, you know, wala akong kakalabit sa inyo dyan. But may the Lord make kalabit to your heart. With all eyes closed, hearts opened. Church, I believe God has been pouring out His healing to us. 2,000 years ago, have we ha had the faith to fully receive? If we have received, praise the Lord. If not yet, praise the Lord. As we have been praying and asking for healing, have we believed that He is the God who's going to take us out of the land of Egypt and bring us into a land of flowing with milk and honey? Yes, a land of abundance. Abundant healing. If, ikaw, if you're not sick, praise God. But if you know someone who is sick while your eyes is closed, can you just imagine that person? With your eyes closed, Imagine the person standing in front of you. And as you receive healing from the Lord, declare that to that person. Come on. The Bible says that we have been given authority through the power of the Holy Spirit. His people have, have exercised healing. Even Peter, di ba? Sabi nga ng mga tao eh. Kahit shadow lang ng damit ni Peter, gagaling kami. Church, let's have that faith. Na kahit ngayon, nandito ka, malayo yung may sakit mong kaibigan, kapamilya, nanay, tatay. That faith, hindi naman sinabi sa Bible na gumaling yung mga tao nung dinaanan sila ng shadow, no. But that faith, that belief, made that faith arise in them, knowing that through the power of the Holy Spirit from Jesus, they will be healed. Let's believe that as one church. Imagine that person right now, eyes closed, with your eyes closed, and just declare in Jesus' name. Say the name of the person and say, you are healed. Come on, in Jesus' name, the name of the person, you are healed. With all faith, come on, come on, come on. Let's, let's have that burning bush encounter right now. 
embracing the presence of God. Come on. In Jesus' name, with the power of the Holy Spirit, John, you are healed. In Jesus' name, with the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary, you are healed. In Jesus' name, with the power of the Holy Spirit, Catherine, you are healed. In Jesus' name, with the power of the Holy Spirit, Amy, you are healed. In Jesus' name, with the power of the Holy Spirit, Francisco, you are healed. Narciso, you are healed. With the power of the Holy Spirit, Emily, you are healed. With the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Beth, you are healed. In the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, Anna, you are healed in the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name Josiah you are healed in the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name Carl you are healed whoever that person is believe 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 he is healing in Jesus name all eyes closed hearts open keep believing and we will worship we will worship but as we worship Let's allow the Father to use us as vessels to declare healing. Tayo yung maging tao who will believe for others. Let us allow the flow of the Spirit to just lavishly saturate.
it like that burning bush. Let that burning bush come. When you say your name, I know there is healing. When you say your name, you're no longer lacking. When you say your name, your joy. Jesus name we sing in Jesus name there is healing in Jesus name in Jesus name I know there is healing in Jesus name we're no longer lacking in Jesus name we're drawn into your embrace for the last time we sing I 
I believe you're my healer. We sing one voice, I believe. Yes, Lord. And I believe
vision because one true thing arises and that is we have a God who will always provide for us, who will never leave us nor forsake us. He will continue to shine light even if it's so dark right now. One single word you hear from Him, the light will spread out. Lord, I pray that you Give those light, Father. Spread the light, Father. Not only through this congregation, Father God, but even through the entire nation of our country, Father. Even to the ends of the world, shine your light, Father. Use every single individual present here in this congregation right now, Father, to shed light for you to be glorified and honored, Father, because we know that we can do nothing apart from you and nothing is impossible for you father god you only is the one true god worthy of all these praises and adoration lord we thank you and we claim the healing you will be giving us today father god we thank you and we love you we honor you father this we Sobra. Sino yung feeling niya ngayon? Lord, I am ready to see you in every moment of my day. Sino dito yung feeling niya? I am so blessed today. Indeed, di ba? Sobrang saya. And with that, I'd like to welcome you all to this Sunday service today. So, magandang umaga. Good morning po para sa lahat. So, sana masaya kayo. Pakitap naman yung katabi. <laughs> pakitap naman yung katabi. Umiyak pa nga kami. So, pakitap naman. Hello, I'm glad to see you today. Pakisabi naman sa katabi ninyo. I'm glad to see you today. Yan. So, para naman, mas maging maigi pa yung pagkakilala natin. I want you to um, look at the screen. Yan. Baka pwedeng umiko tayo or yung mga hindi pa natin kilala masyado. I want you to go around and meet someone new to you and answer this question. Pag-usapan niya lang. So yung una, what is your name? Second question is, what brought you to victory? Third is, where are you from? So that's gonna be for one minute. So pwede tayong umiko at basta po after one minute, you go back to your seat. Okay, pwede na po tayo mag-start. So, once again, yan, baka pwede na tayong maupo. Yan, thank you so much. Once again, good morning. Uh, Victory Puerto Princesa. I am Teacher Sab. I'm one of the volunteers here at um, Victory Puerto Princesa. And of course, here at Victory, we love doing two things. And that's to honor God and make disciples. So, with that, so sana may mga na-meet kayo kanina. And we hope that you, you know, eventually um, get more Uh, relationship with our uh, fellow members of the congregation. So maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po. You know, church, every day or every Sunday, di ba, every time we, we attend services, lagi natin inisip, this is a day for me to really serve the Lord well, to share whatever I have. Okay? Um, kung ano man yung pwede kong i-offer, offer ko na. But you know that 
it is not only during Sundays that we can actually give and share and offer something to our Lord. Okay? Every day we can do that. But right now, make it extra special. I want to read for you uh, a verse from... Yan, mukhang, yon. So, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. So, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Whatever we have right now, truly we are blessed, di ba? Because we have a God who always provides. And right now, church, I would like to encourage you, whatever you have, please share it. Because we know that God never fails to give us something in return. Although we are not here to be, um, to, to, you know, magantay ng kapalit from, from the Lord. But we know that once we, we, we are created by God, not only to receive her, His blessings, but also to share that blessings as well. So, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, oh God, for another opportunity, Father. We thank you that right at this very moment, Father, whatever um, hindrances, Father, that we are, we are feeling right now in to worship you and to glorify your name, Father, you are removing it from our heart, Father, you, and you will make it you will make our hearts pure, Father, because we know you deserve all the, the, the most genuine um, praise and worship, Father God. We thank you even, Father, for, for the provisions you are providing us, Father. And I pray that everyone in this congregation would feel, Father, that they are not lacking because you are enough for us, Father God. We thank you. May you bless the preaching of your word today, Father God. We, um, we pray, Father, that every member of this, this congregation will not leave this building, Father, this hall, Father, empty, but um, really, busog na busog sa, sa mensahe niyo, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat po. All glory and honor and praises belongs to you and you alone, Jesus. This we pray in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. Now, church, let us prepare our heart for the uh, word. Can raging storms be silent? Every hurt and anxious thought, grief and isolation, freedom, healing, purpose, away in the wilderness, streams in the wasteland. Are there miracles even in the impossible? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service here in Robinson Cinema. Welcome to Victory Church, Puerto Princesa. And today we are continuing on our series called Even in the Impossible. And uh, if you heard from the past announcement, just last week, just previously this week, we did our mid-year prayer and fasting. And I would like to thank everyone who joined our week of consecration. So you can picture during our prayer meetings and uh, it was really a powerful time, and I hope that uh, the fasting really made an impact in our lives, especially in our spirituality. And uh, ayan, ayan yung mga pictures natin, ano? Kaya tignan mo yung katabi, sabi mo, kaya ka pala pumayat, no? Pero balikan mo, sabi mo, hindi, tumaba ka lang, ano? Kaya feeling mo. Pero it, it was a very, very joyful time to just worship the Lord, believe God for greater things in our lives, for our nation, for the church, and for the next generation. And uh, if you're coming here for the first time or bago pa lang kayo sa Victory, the theme of 2023 is actually miracles. Tayo yung naniniwala, itong 2023 ay taon ng mga himula, ng himala mula sa ating Panginoon. And do you believe that? No? That this year, God will just amaze us. And I believe hindi lang ngayong taon, but for Christians, for people of God, miracles are our reality. Hindi siya pangarap lang, hindi siya pipe dream. Rather, it's a reality for us. I remember what Bishop Jure Mora said, miracles are not a phenomenon to God. Hindi to parang one in a billion years or once in a blue moon nangyari, it's not a phenomenon to God. Miracles are not a new thing. Rather, miracles are there every day of our lives. Yung araw-araw pa lang na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin, kung titignan nyo, marami na siyang himalang ginagawa for all of us. And I pray that our faith will arise, mag-iiba yung mindset natin, mag-iiba yung tingin natin kay Lord, that He could do amazing things on our behalf. And I pray, and our hope is that we believe yes for miracles for us, 
miracles for our personal lives, pero we should also believe that God will perform miracles through us, that people will believe in God, that we will be a conduit of the power of God, so that these people in our lives, they would also get to know God, and they would be blessed by having a relationship with their Creator. So today, we'll talk about the miracle of healing. So we'll talk about illness and healing for our uh, top for our topic today in our worship service. And when you talk about healing, we define healing as a manifestation of God's power to cure emotional, mental, and physical distress. And who among you here, you are in faith, God will heal me today. God will heal me today. So if you're excited, can I invite you to stand right now as we give reverence to the Word of God. Our text will be in Luke chapter 5. We'll be, again, studying from the book of Luke, written by Dr. Luke, and we'll read verses 12 to 15. That's the Word of the Lord for us. This morning, while he was in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. And when he saw Jesus, he fell on his face and begged him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Verse 14, and he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded for a proof to them. But now even more, the report about him went abroad and great crowds gathered to hear him to be healed of their infirmities. That is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. God, thank you for your word. Thank you that your word is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. And I pray, God, that your word would pierce to our dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrows. Even let it guard the, the intentions and the thoughts of our hearts. I know, God, you would allow your word to pierce through our, our body, our soul, our spirit. That's the power of your word. It would pierce through our body, our soul, in our spirit, and I pray that as your word pierces our body, our soul, our spirit, Lord God, there will be a manifestation of your power and of your healing to those who are in distress. So God, we're excited to just experience your power and your healing in our worship service today. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may now take your seats. So one common question, you know, I'll be mentioning some common questions that may come in mind about Ill- illness and healing. I believe one question, di ba, na naiisip natin, why do we experience emotional, mental, and physical distress? Bakit ba natin na-experience to? Para ka, baka Lord, beke naman, pwede namang wala nilang ganito, no? Baka Lord, pwede namang walang emotional, mental, and physical distress. Pero we experience that, and that's a reality in our world. Tama? It's a reality no one could, could escape this. Tignan mo yung katabi mo, mo, even you, kung mo pa na-experience, no? this is part of life. This is inevitable. Okay? And the reason why we experience this stuff is because sin entered the world. When sin entered the world, brokenness happened. Brokenness happened. That's why everyone will deal with illness or injury at some point of our lives. Kaya tignan natin, di ba yung katawan natin tumatanda. Tignan mo yung katabi mo, mukha bang tumatanda yan? Pastor, parang may daya eh. Pero lahat tayo tatanda at tatanda pa rin. Our body will deteriorate and no one of us will live forever. Why? Because sin entered the world. And when sin entered the world, death happened. Death happened. We're not living in a perfect world. We're living in a broken world because sin entered and ruined God's plan. But God always saves God, wants to redeem His people, and I pray that today we will see the redeeming work of God in our lives. So one of the consequences of the presence of sin is that we cannot get away from the brokenness of our minds and bodies. Part na talaga siya ng life. No? Kahit uh, anong gawin natin, no? part na talaga siya ng buhay natin. In the book, Christ the Healer by F. F. Bosworth, uh, he mentioned one portion of, of the book, he talked about uh, the effects of sin in our being. And if you know your theology, tayo as a human being, there's two sides of that. You can believe the tripartite or you can believe the uh, yung, yung tripartite, you believe in body, soul, and spirit. And it's orthodox, it's accepted. 
Pero may naniniwala din yung dalawa lang siya. It's just spirit and body. And the spirit consists of spirit and soul. So, whatever you believe, it's accepted. But commonly, okay, ang pinapaniwalaan, we're tripartite, spirit, soul, and body because there are so many verses attributing to that. When you look at the inner man, it talks about our spirit and soul. Tignan mo yung katabi mo, mukha bang may soul yan? Mukha bang may kaluluwa yan? Meron naman, di ba? Tignan mo yung katabi mo, di ba? Next one, we are also has outer man, di ba? Or the physical body. Tignan mo ulit yung katabi mo, may physical body ba yan? O kaluluwa lang yan? Lumulutang-lutang lang. Di ba? But we are created by God, spirit, soul, and body. And this is the effect of sin. Let me flash this table. The inner man, when sin entered, Adam, by his fall, he brought sin into our souls. No? Kaya yung soul natin, di ba, it's, it's broken. Uh, we have so many hang-ups. Ang dami nating mga dala-dala, no? It's because sin has broken uh, our lives. And when you look at our body, our outer man, because of sin, because of the fall of man, it brought disease into our bodies. Kaya tayo nagkakasakit. Kaya tayo, di ba, namamatay. And uh, that is a reality in our lives. Sabi nga nila, di ba, there are... Uh, things that are sure in this life, taxes and debt. Diba, sabi yun yung ano, diba, the, uh, kung ano yung hindi mawawala sa mundo, diba, taxes and debt. Uh, truth about life yan. And magcha-champion yung Lakers this season. I think those are some of the realities no, in life. But going back to the word, ano pa nangyari sa ating inner man? So, uh, because Jesus... This is the redeeming work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was made sin for us, 2 Corinthians 5.21, and He bore our sins. And when you look at, diba, inner man, so He restored no, our soul. He, kaya nga, diba, we are born again. And our, yung born again natin, ang naboborn again, yung spirit, na regenerate yung spirit natin na nasira ng kasalanan. O, kaya dati, diba, nung wala ka pa kay God, wala ka pang relationship kay Jesus, Wala kang ano, wala kang remorse gumawa ng kasalanan. Wala sa iyo yung kasalanan, eh. wala kang ka ano, ka uh, parang wala lang sa iyo talaga, parang I'm not doing anything wrong. Pero nung nung dumating na si Jesus sa life mo, nagkaroon ka na ng matinding conviction about your life. No na parang ay mali ito. Parang ayoko gawin ito. It's because God already renewed no our inner man na born na ginning spirit natin na regenerate na. When you talk about the outer man naman, Jesus was made a curse for us, Galatians 3.13, when He bore our sickness, Matthew 8.17. So meaning, Jesus came here also not just to address sin, but even our sickness, He bore it during His life and also on the cross. In, when you talk about the inner man, our spirit is bought with a price, 1 Corinthians 6.20. That's why our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the outer man, our body, is bought with a price. Kaya nga iniingatan natin yung katawan natin. Because our body was bought with a price. Jesus purchased and redeemed us when He came here 2,000 years ago. That's why we need to take care of our bodies. Look at your neighbor right now. Sabi mo, Amen. Amen. Ano? Amen. No? Kaya gusto ni Lord, pinapangalagaan natin. Kaya ayaw ni Lord, nagbibisyo tayo. Hindi lang sa bisyo, sa kinakain natin. Sa tulog natin, hindi natin inaabuso ang ating katawan at hindi natin dinidisrespect ang ating katawan. And lastly, uh, FF Bosworth talked about the inner man in Psalm 103, if you have your Bibles with you, verses 2 to 3, binanggit to, no? Bless the Lord who forgives our iniquity. So there's something inside of us that the Lord makes whole again. And when you look at the outer man, bless the Lord who heals all your diseases. So this is the work of God. Yes, uh, it's a broken world. Sin is rampant. Brokenness is a reality. But Jesus made healing available through His life, through His death, and through His resurrection. That's why our topic today, we'll talk about healing. We'll talk about the manifestation of God's power to cure not just physical distress because healing comes also emotionally and mentally into our lives. Pastor, pwede ba financially din? Oo, part na yan. Inaayos ni Lord holistically ang ating buhay. So our story today is about a leper. no? A leper who who is an outcast in society and this man had a severe case of, of leprosy and Jesus came, okay, to heal his, 
to heal him emotionally, mentally, and also physically. So let's go to Luke chapter 5, starting in verse 12. So in one of the cities, there came a man full of leprosy. So interesting to no, there came a man full of leprosy. Leprosy, si, hindi pa nauuso yung quarantine, sila naka-quarantine na noon. Hindi sila pwedeng lumabas, hindi sila pwedeng lumapit. Kaya itong verse pa lang na to na there came a man may of leprosy na lumapit. This is already a big step of faith. And when you look at full of leprosy, when you look at other translations in the NIV, covered with leprosy. So para siyang leprosy na tinubuan ng tao. Ganon yung description sa kanya. Buong katawan niya, covered with leprosy. NLT, New Living Translation, Advanced Case of Leprosy, meaning may mga regular case, may mga usual cases, pero itong matinding kaso to, parang ito yung pinakamatinding nakita nila, no? ever recorded. It's an advanced case. And God news trans, Good News Translation would say it's a dreaded skin disease, meaning nakamamatay. No? At uh, matindi yung epekto sa isang tao. When you look at the Tyndale New, Ten New Testament commentaries written by Leon Morris, he, he talked about leprosy in biblical time. So we could understand no, in, in their context during their time, gano ba yung impact ng leprosy itong pinagdadaanan ng uh, tao na to. So leprosy in biblical times was the name given to a variety of diseases, some curable and some not. In its worst form, which talks about our topic for today, it was a very dreadful disease. And because of that, lepers had no way of earning a living and had to depend on charity. So, hindi ka lang, uh, hindi ka lang may sakit. Wala ka ng social life. Kasi hindi ka pwede lumapit. Wala ka ng love life. O yung iba, oh. <laughs> ba? Walang love life. Tapos, wala ka pang source of income. You depend on charity of people. And imagine how difficult is that? Ang hirap ng pinagdadaanan nung lalaking ito, okay? And another thing about leprosy from William Barclay, uh, the Gospel of Luke, the Daily, Bible, da Daily Study Bible series, in Palestine, there were two kinds of leprosy. There was one which was rather like a very bad skin disease, and it was the less serious of the two. So there was one in which the disease, starting from a small spot, it it's away the flesh until the wretch sufferer was left with only the stump of a hand or a leg. Ganon katindi na kinakain, di ba, yung, 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 yung katawan mo na ang natitira nilang daw, kamay mo nilang, or paa, or leg, ganon katindi. It was literally a living death. So buhay ka na, pero parang patay ka na. Di ba, lalo na ngayon, di ba, uzong-uzo yung mga zombies? Di ba, sino di yung mahilig sa zombie movies? No? And I think that's the picture, not just of a, of a leper, but even in our time today, a lot of people, they're living like a leper or like a zombie kasi buhay nga, pero spiritually dead. And I believe that God wants to address that also. Living death. Buhay ka, pero spiritually you're dead. Ginagawa mo yung bagay that dead people do. And lastly, from Francois Viljon, Jesus healing the leper in the purity law in the Gospel of Matthew, being contagious and unclean persons, lepers were supposed to isolate themselves from others, demonstrate their impurity, and warn people of their illness. They had to wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkept, cover the lower part of their faces, and shout, unclean, unclean. So grabe yung discrimination. Sino dito naalala nyo ng pandemic, yung may experience ka rin na discriminate ka? Yung naubo ka lang, gusto ka na incriminate? Experience nyo yun ng pandemic? Ako nga, naubo lang nun dati, parang ah, may ganun-ganun lang eh. Tapos nagpa-test ako, negative naman, pero parang pandidirihan nga, di ba? Na-experience nyo yun? Kahit gano'ng kakagwapo, pandidirihan ka pa rin. Ah, anak, so. Di ako makarelate, no? Si RC siguro makarelate. Pero ganun yung tindi ng pinagdadaanan ng, ng leper. And tayo rin dito sa Palawan, if you don't know, di ba, Kulyon was actually a leper colony. Lahat ng may leprosy, dinadala sa Kulyon. Nakikita, si Tap ba yung nakikita ko? Yung shoes kasi yung, ano, hindi ko kita yung shoes. Pag maganda shoes, si Tap eh, okay. This is si Tap, ang tagal niyang na-assign sa, sa cool yun. And I was able to visit there, si Mix din, and sa din, I was able to visit there to train our, our church there. And I was able to attend yung, yung parang history sa museum. And grabe talaga, maiyak ka talaga when you hear the stories, when you see the history at hirap ng isang taong merong ketong or merong leprosy. That's why yung kulyon, di ba, it was, no, nakikita nyo ba yung mga pictures? No, ganyan, no, parang, pero miniature lang yun, di totoong tao yan. Ha? Ano lang yan, parang uh, inano lang nila for museum sake. 
So, Kulyon was called the city of the living dead. No? Pero ngayon, wala na namang may ketong, pero makikita mo may mga kulang-kulang doon na ano, when we were going around. From city of the living dead, it's now known as the city of the living hope. And that's the work of God. I believe maybe some of us, we're living deads. But I believe God wants to bring hope to us. Wants to, not just hope, but to bring joy again, rekindle joy again in our hearts that the enemy has robbed us for so many years now. So let's continue. So pumunta siya kay Lord. He fell on his face and nagbakaawa siya kay Lord. So this was a leap of faith. Bawal ka lumapit, pero tumatakbo siya. Imagine nyo, he was running. Gusto sa pigilan ng mga tao pero hindi mapigilan kasi may ketong. Pero lumapit sa kay Lord at nagbakaawa, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. So this was a very high risk moment for this leper. Kasi sa ginawa niya, he could be stoned to death. Sa ginawa niya dahil lumapit siya, he broke the social distancing, the physical distancing na, na, na the protocol for lepers. And it's interesting, he said to Jesus Christ, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. He said, Lord. The word Lord here is the Greek word kurios, meaning God, Master, Authority, Messiah. He had the revelation that this Jesus, He has authority over His sickness because He is God. Kurios. Kurios. God, Authority, Superior above everything else. This moment underscores the superiority and authority of Jesus and the deference and the humility and dependence of the leper. And I hope that itong, itong moment na to, we could also see our place na tayo, we should be humble, dependent, and defer to God because alone, we cannot do anything about our situation. But knowing that Jesus is Lord, Jesus is curious, meaning He has authority over any sickness, over any disease, or over any emotional, mental, or physical distress that we're having right now. Amen? He has authority above all else. I remember in Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says the name of Jesus is above every name. Above every name, the name of Jesus is more powerful and has authority over any name above the earth, on the earth, even under the earth. So, when you look at your situation, the name of Jesus Christ has full authority and power and dominion over your situation. Now we're talking, mga kapatid, kung hindi pa tumataas yung panampalataya nyo, ituloy natin. So, ang ginawa ni Jesus, di ba? Jesus stretched out His hand. He stretched out his hand and touched him. He touched the leper. Hindi walang gumagawa nito. But Jesus touched the leper and he said, I will. I will heal you. He said, be clean. First point, Jesus is willing and able to heal. He is willing, parang nung provisions lang natin, may taong willing pero hindi able. Si Jesus is willing and He's able not just to provide, He's willing and He's able to heal. To heal you, to heal your loved one, to heal your friend. Jesus is willing and able. Kaya nga, nung sinabi ni Jesus, be clean, immediately the leprosy left Him. Jesus is willing and able to heal. Alam ko, maraming negative dito. If Jesus is willing and able to heal, then why doesn't everyone get healed? Oh, Ah, pastor, ano ka, bulaan ka, you're a false prophet. Jesus is willing and able to heal, pero bata ko, yung pamilya ko, di ba, yung magulang ko, namatay, hindi hinil ni Christ. Ba't yung asawa ko, hindi hinil ni Christ? Kala ko ba, he's willing and able. Why doesn't everyone get healed? Going back to the book, Christ the Healer by F.F. F. Bosworth, he gave 22 reasons why everyone doesn't get healed. Here are some prominent reasons. Namili lang ako kasi kung 22, aabutin na natin yung next showing sa cinema na to. In si Juice, okay. <laughs> okay. The first one, why doesn't everyone get healed? One prominent reason is unbelief. Unbelief. Di ka kasi naniniwala na kaya mag ni Christ. Hindi kaya ni Lord mag Si Adventist kaya. Si Co-op kaya. Si Ace kaya. Si Lord, baka hindi. Unbelief. In Matthew 13, 58, the Bible says Jesus wasn't do many mighty works there in His hometown because of people's unbelief. Why? Because God operates in faith. God doesn't move because there's need. God moves because there is faith. Our faith is our divine connection to our healer, to our powerful God. Yun yung connection natin to our 
healer, to our powerful God. Second reason why doesn't everyone get healed is because we're breaking natural laws. What do we mean breaking natural laws? Ito yung tanong ko, are you eating well? Kumakain ka ba ng tama? Diba? Kung kumain ka, araw-araw, sisig. Kakain ka munggo, puro chicharon. Diba? Crispy pata. Tapos fried rice pa. Ang sarap, no? Tapos, ganun yung kinain mo, no? Para ma-balance, cook zero. Ha? Tapos feeling mo, ang healthy-healthy mo, cook zero. Pero magdi-dessert ka pa ng cake. Pero naka-cook zero ka naman, eh. Tapos, tumaas yung antapresyon mo. Nagkaroon ng blockage sa arteries mo. Ngayon magre ka, Lord, bakit mo ako pinabayaan? Diba? Lord, ba't di mo ako pinapagaling? E sige ka pa rin sa lifestyle mo. That's what you call breaking natural laws. Are you eating well? Are you sleeping enough? Puyat ka, lagi di ka natutulog. Two hours a day lang tulog mo. Mababaw pa. E paano? Magdamag ka, nag-aabang. Kailan kaya siya magpapalit ng relationship status? Puyat na puyat. No? Mag-focus ka kay Lord, wag sa relationship status. Are you exercising? No? Kaya iniingatan natin, kaya tayo nag exercise no? Natutulog ka ng maayos, kumakain ka ng maayos, nag exercise ka. Di ba? Parang, dapat nag exercise Ito ba, are you taking on too many responsibilities? Masyado ka bang pabibo? Performance mentality. Kailangan bida ka lagi. Kailangan involved ka lagi. You're breaking natural laws. Di mo inaalagaan yung katawan mo. Remember, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Diba, may kasama ko sa victory group nun eh. Like, umiiyak dun eh. Hindi ako makapag-abroad. Diba, may sakit ako. Diba, may butas kasi yung lungs niya. Hindi na nakapag-abroad. Ay, mahal ba ako ni Lord? Eh, grabe, kung manigaril nyo, tatlo-tatlo. Diba, sabi ko, tapos magagalit ka kay Lord. Sabi ko, Ang sampaling kita ng kulhan eh. <laughs> Parang, it doesn't make sense. So are you breaking the natural law? How is your lifestyle? Ito pangatlo. From FF Bossword, unconfessed sin. Sometimes a person may experience a healing block because they continue to resist God's conviction in an area of sin. In this case, confession of sins would be necessary to receive healing. This is another prominent reason. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another and be healed. So there's, there's an account in Scripture that tells us we need to confess our sins, we need to expose our sins, and then pray for it, bring it, expose it, so there can be healing. You know? Healing holistically in our lives. A prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Another prominent reason why we don't get healed is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness creates all sorts of problems emotionally, mentally, and even physically. No, parang, ang dami natin pinagdadaanan, no? Parang, lalo na when you talk about unforgiveness, when you talk about emotionally and mentally, yung ang dami mong galit sa mundo. Kakainin talaga, lalamunin talaga tayo ng galit na yun. Tapos yung kinakagalitan mo, Hilik na hilik sa pagtulog. Sarap ng tulog. Ikaw di makatulog. Ganito, ganito. Bumili ka pa manika, tinutusok mo pa. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Tindi, no? Tindi, may in Jesus' name pa, no? Tinutusok ng karayom. No? In Jesus' name, dinamay pa si Jesus. Pero, forgiveness of sins is a vital part of salvation. If we do not forgive, God can neither forgive nor heal us. Diba sabi ni Jesus, forgive as we have been forgiven. And lastly, uh, uh, another thing I'd like to mention is demonic interference. It's a reality, the oppression of the enemy. While sickness can have natural and emotional causes, sometimes sickness and disease are directly caused by demonic spirits. The demonic spirit needs to be cast out for the person to be healed. Kaya pala may school yung pastor. May nakaupo pala dito na pastor. Kakanood mo yan kung ano-ano, di ba? Yeah, insidious pa more. Insidious, okay? Huwag na insidious. Punta na lang sa juice. Just, just, kay just, sa just na lang. Corny, no? <laughs> Na-miss ko mag-preach talaga. And those are some prominent reasons why we don't get healed. There are other plenty of reasons. Or maybe it's really part of the will of God. Because God could use sickness and healing 
and maybe even suffering for His glory and for our sanctification. Since na mention na natin, another questions come in mind, ano ba yung mga misconceptions about healing? These are some of the misconceptions that healing will always be immediate. There are times that healing can be immediate. But there are times also that healing can be long-awaited. Like Sarah and Elizabeth, the barrenness, their womb needs to be healed. It took a couple of years. A man lame from birth. So, and daming accounts sa Bible na, na antagal din dumating nung healing sa buhay ng isang tao. So, it could be, it could be immediate. Lalo na with partnered with the miracle of, uh, uh, with the spiritual gift of miracles and power. But a lot of times, healing can also be long-awaited. It could be long-suffering. Another misconception is that taking medicine is always a sign of belief. Di ako, di ako papagamot. Di ako papadoktor. Di, di talaga, di ba? Parang kaya na ni Lord to. May sobrang extreme na ganun eh. Kahit ano na eh, uh, pumutok na yung appendix. Lilayans ko lang to. Lilayans lang ni pastor to. Wisdom din, kapatid. Binigyan tayo ni Lord ng wisdom at gumagamit din siya ng tao para i-heal tayo. Diba? In Genesis nga, He gave every plant, every herb, every seed for our benefit. And medicines are part of that, not just food. And ito pa, last misconception. Para hindi na tayo ganun umaba. We need, another misconception is that we need to ask God whether will ba ni Lord pagalingin ako or hindi? Sana makita natin yung heart ni Jesus. It is really God's heart to heal His children. Kanina, ito yung common tanong. Lord, if you're, if you're willing and able to heal, why doesn't everyone get healed? I think we're asking the wrong question. This should be the question we are asking. This is the real question. Why is anyone ever healed at all? Gets? Kasi ang reality natin, destiny natin, death, Katawa natin nagde-deteriorate because of sin. We're living in a broken world. Yun talaga yung reality natin. Kaya ang question, hindi, bakit hindi gumagaling? Ang question, bakit may gumagaling? Yun talaga destiny natin eh. Kapatid, kahit anong laklak natin ng stem cells, dun pa rin punta natin. Kahit itry natin, iprolong at iprolong yung buhay natin, yun pa rin yung pupuntahan natin. Kaya the appropriate question should be, why is anyone ever healed at all? At tayo, takot na takot tayo mamatay, di ba? Because that's the desire that God put, put in our heart. Eternity is etched over our lives. Because we were meant to live forever and over, ever with our God. Kaya takot tayo sa death na ano na ng sin. Pero ito si Lord, yung plano niya, gusto pa rin niya ituloy. Hindi drawing si God. Kaya minsan, I want us to understand this. Yung healing, hindi lang siya physical healing. Yung he, may tinatawag din tayong ultimate healing or spiritual healing. Minsan, yung sakit na hindi gumaling, yung pala yung ginagamit ni God to bring in the ultimate healing. At yun ay yung makasama na siya sa langit. Minsan yun yung gusto ibigay ni Lord, ultimate healing. Sino dito gusto mo na ng ultimate healing? Sino dito yung may pinagpipray ka, ultimate healing na yung pagpipray ko sa <laughs> Kwento ko lang ah. Pag nagsabi ko kwento ko lang, ibig sabihin, over, mag-overtime tayo. Ano, kwento ko na ito, di ba? Parang, siguro sa bilang ko, lahat ng mga pinuntang ko sa ospital para ipag-pray, I think zero out of 19 na ako. Lahat ng pinag-pray ko, namatay kinagabihan or kinabukasan or within the week. Kaya pag nagkasakit kayo, sila, mix nilang RC, Migi, okay? Naalala ko nung nasa Victory Molino pa ako. May lumapit sa akin. Si Mika, campus missionary natin sa Molino, kasama ko for the longest time. Pero bermosa na siya. Sana magpuerto na siya. Okay. Magpuerto na siya. Until Jesus return. O pumalak pa ako, nag-amen. Naalala ko, after service, nakwento ko yun. Kasi, ano, medyo dinala ko talaga yun. Kasi huli kong pinag-pray nun, one year old na may leukemia. Grabe yung prayer talaga namin. Tapos, pagkaalis ko, maya maya, in a few hours, namatay na siya. Dinamdam ko talaga. Lord, I long to see healing. And God just impressed to me that healing doesn't just come in a physical healing. The ultimate healing, ito dapat yung nilulook forward natin, na makakasama na, natin siya. Na no more sickness, no more decay, no more suffering, no more pain. Kaya may lumapit sa akin nun eh. Sabi, Pastor, yung asawa ko, siya yung magiging unang ipagpipray mo na gagaling. Sabi nung asawa, 
ibang pastore lang. Let's not take the chance. Let's not take the chance. <laughs> but yun nga, the healing of God can be ultimate healing. This is what I love about the gospel. It offers a hope that exceeds the reparation of our bodies. So healing can come also in that. So continuing, and Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Sabi niya, I will be clean. In Mark 1.41, same account regarding this leper, Jesus was moved with compassion. Diba? He was moved. Ito yung tanong eh. Why does everyone, why does someone get healed? Diba? That's the right question. Why does anyone get healed? Ito yung reason. Because may compassion si Jesus. Kita mo yung compassion niya. Walang umahawak sa leper na to, pero hinawakan niya. No, he touches even the untouchable. Even the outcast. No, he would, Jesus would have made the way. Ganon yung puso ng Panginoon sa atin. Ayaw niya nakikita ang nagsasuffer tayo. Kaya nga yung shortest verse in scripture, John 11.35, Jesus swept. De, wept. Umiyak siya. Jesus wept. Umiyak siya. That was so powerful because Jesus understand our emotions. He could identify with us. You know, He could wipe your tears. Why? Because siya rin. We know wipe niya yung tears niya para sa atin. And He is moved with compassion. He heals with compassion. And this miracle points to Jesus Christ. Compassion for those who are afflicted with sickness and disease. He touched the leper showing His pity and mercy to His condition. Kaya huwag mo sasabing, hindi ako naiintindihan ni Lord. Hindi alam pinagdadaanan ko. Iniwan ako ni Lord. Alam ni Jesus yan. And He wants to bring healing to you today. In the name of Jesus. So, Jesus touching the leper shows not just His authority over the disease, but also His great compassion. There's no untouchables in the eyes of God. He would stretch out His hand. Sabi nga sa Isaiah 59 verse 1, Hindi maiksi yung braso ni God. The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. The Lord can touch you right now. The Lord can touch every loved one of yours that we're thinking right now. And God could bring healing and salvation upon them. Jesus is willing to heal anyone who comes to Him in faith. Regardless of, your, regardless of your social status or condition, Jesus will not hesitate to heal us because His heart is to heal His people. Kaya nga continuing, di ba? Pinagaling na niya. Pinagaling na ni Jesus. So Jesus heals with compassion. He's willing and able to heal. He heals us you know, with, with so much love and compassion. And sinabi ni Jesus sa leper nung pinagaling niya, okay, Go and show yourself to the priest. Huwag mo na sabihin sa iba, go and show yourself to the priest. Make an offering for your cleansing as Moses commanded. Actually, it's in Leviticus 14. Na kapag ang isang leper ay gumaling, he needs to make an appearance to the priest. May gagawin mga ritual, maliligo ng pitong beses, blah, 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 blah. Ay, uh, maliligo, tapos magpapalit ng damit, tapos para makita wala na yung mga sores, mga sakit niya. Tapos seven days magkakwaratin bago ibalik ulit sa society. When Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest, he was restoring the leper to society. So Jesus, when He heals, He brings restoration upon our lives. He brings restoration to our relationship with Him and also so mga relationship na kailangan ayusin natin. So the, the, Jesus commands the leper to seek validation of His healing so He can be restored to His community. So that's the heart of Jesus. It's to heal us and restore us holistically. Holistically, every area of your life, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically, even socially, God wants to bring healing and restoration. And one thing about this miracle of healing, it was a sign or proof that points to Jesus as the Messiah. Yung pag niya ng leper. Kasi alam nyo, yung leprosy, Ang tingin nila sa leprosy, Palestinian times, Asian Near Eastern time, ang tingin nila, para siyang ano, bumubuhay ka ng patay. It's the same magnitude of resurrecting someone from the dead. Kaya nga, di ba, pag leper, parang ano ka na, living dead. So, it's like raising someone from the dead. And no one could do that except you are the Messiah. There were two times na merong lepers na nahil in the Old Testament. Una si Miriam. Numbers, anong numbers yan? In Numbers chapter 12, si Miriam nagka-leprosy for seven days dahil in-undermine niya yung leadership ni Moses. So, pero hinil din ni Lord, just taught Miriam the lesson. Another one is Naaman. Diba, if you remember in 2 Kings chapter 5, the general of the army of Aram, si Elisha, kanina nung prayer huddle namin, Elisha yung sinishare ni Claire. Si, si Elisha, diba, pinaligo niya sa Jordan River pitong beses at afternoon gumaling. So there are just two times 
two instances in the Bible, and they know kapag may heal si Lord John. And when you look at 700 years later, dun lang nagkaroon ulit ng healing. At yung healing na ginawa ni Christ, they call it the Messianic Age in uh, Luke 7 verse 22. Na kapag yung blind, nakakakita na, yung demons, nakakas out na, at yung lepers gumagaling, it talks about it's the time of the Messiah. And what Jesus proved here, it was actually Jesus proving, I am really curious. I am really your Savior. I am really your Lord. I am really your Messiah. That's why in Luke 5.15, when people hear these reports, great crowds gather to hear Him to be healed of their infirmities. They gather to hear from Christ, to be with Christ, and to be healed of their infirmities. That's my last point as we end. Jesus heals as we hear His instruction. Why? Why do Jesus heals when we hear His instruction? Why? Because our faith is strengthened when we hear the Word of God. Diba? Ito ngayon, preaching of the Word, naririnig natin. Napapump up tayo, tumataas yung pananampalataya natin. It gives us hope. That's the power of the Word of God. When we hear the Word of God, our faith is strengthened. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. And also in the Gospel, since our faith is being strengthened and pumped up, sabi sa, sa, uh, sa Gospels, di ba, there are so many accounts that Jesus healed people through their faith. Di ba? By your faith, you are healed. A lot of times, Jesus mentioned that healing. A, a, a young ka, a child, di ba, a lame person from birth, a blind person, because of their faith, Jesus brought healing to them. That's why I hope today, as we end, meron na tayong faith. Nakita na natin yung reality that God is so powerful, He could bring healing to my life. He is moved with compassion with my situations. And because of of this faith, he would use this faith as an avenue of his power to manifest in my life. Miracles for us, miracles through us. Exodus 15, 26. God declared, For I am the Lord, your healer. I am Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. If you're thinking today, can I be healed? The Lord God says, I am the Lord, your God. I am your healer. Jehovah Rapha, I can heal. And you know why we can heal also? Healing was made available because of the work, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Isaiah 53 verse 5. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And because of the wounds of Christ, we are healed. Jesus became sick for us so that we could be healed. Jesus was wounded so that we can be healed. This is the promise of our Lord to His people. By the wounds of Christ, we are healed. In impossible situations, we can always trust the Word of God. Jesus is able to heal even the uncurable disease. Even something that you've been carrying on for the longest time. Even something that you're not even aware of. God could heal that today. Amen? Can I invite you to stand right now? We're going to worship the Lord again. We're going to allow faith to rise up in our midst today. And we're going to declare, Lord, you are my healer. In the power of the name of Jesus Christ. We understand the name of Jesus Christ is authority. Curious. One word of Jesus. One word. We will be healed. So maybe you are here today. You need physical healing. Your healing was purchased on the cross 2,000 years ago. Maybe it's a heart problem, a kidney problem. Maybe one of your arteries are blocked. Maybe a loved one is diagnosed with cancer. Maybe it is your womb that needs to be healed. God can bring healing. He purchased that. The question, do you believe? You look at the leper. He was in a bad place emotionally, mentally. And maybe some of us, it's a reality. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, you are here today, you feel depressed. 
You're having panic attacks. You can't sleep at night. Just don't know what's happening in your life right now. I believe God wants to bring healing also to restore you holistically right now. And we talk about the living dead. And maybe you are dead to sin right now. You've been carrying maybe anger, lust, unforgiveness. I believe God wants to heal you from those things as well. So Jesus, we declare, you are our God. You are our healer. You are Lord. You have authority over any sickness. Lord, let the faith of your people arise. We declare, we declare, we declare with our lips. You are our healer. So God, we lift you up. We enthrone you in our midst today. We worship our healer. We worship our God. We worship our Kurios in Jesus' name.
we need, Lord. You are all that we need. Lord, we acknowledge that we are empty. We are insufficient without you. Jesus, today we acknowledge we are sinners, oh God. Lord, we are living in a broken world. We're living in a sinful world. Lord, forgive us for our disobedience. Forgive us if we have taken you for granted. Forgive us, God, if we made the world our God. But today, God, we repent, oh Lord. We repent and we revert to you, God, as our Lord, as our Savior. Jesus, we believe you are God. Jesus, we profess and we confess. You are our Lord. You are our Savior. You are God. And today, we give our lives to you, oh Lord. We give our lives to you. We believe you are the healer, the healer of our lives, the healer of our soul, the healer of our spirit, and also the healer of our body. And I want to take this moment, if you are here today and you're believing God for healing, physical healing, even emotional healing, even mental healing, we would like to invite you here in front. We'd like to lay our hands on you right now. And to our victory group leaders, to our prayer team, please be ready to minister. If you are here today, you need healing. You know, take a step of faith right now. Or maybe you're believing God for healing for someone. Someone close to you, someone you love. And maybe God has impressed in your heart. I need that. I need that. I believe God wants to uh, unlock His healing today upon His church. Miracles for us. Miracles through us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, as they come down, Lord, you're acknowledging their faith. You're acknowledging their faith, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just stretch out our hands towards our brethren, so our brothers and sisters. Jesus, we lift up our brothers and sisters to you, God. Lord, we lift them up to you, God. And we pray, Lord God, for their healing upon their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you, would you pour out your healing, God, upon their lives? I believe, God, your healing, Lord God. There's a renewal of mind that's happening. Lord, freedom from even healing from suicidal thoughts. Lord, from depression, from even beating yourself, from anger. Lord, you're freeing them right now. Lord, from any root of bitterness, you're uprooting that right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're healing something in their mind. Lord, you're healing their soul right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you would plant, Lord God, the joy of the Lord upon their hearts, upon their minds. Lord, begin, Lord God, to renew their minds. That they're beginning, Lord God, to feel joy again, Lord God, in their lives. They're beginning to feel hope again, Lord God. Lord, thank you that you're giving them new strength, Lord God, to live every day. I believe for some, Lord, for, for some of us, God, Lord, it's hard for us to wake up each morning with so much uncertainty, with so much frustrations. But God, you're changing that right now. You're giving us new hope. You're giving us new faith, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're renewing us right now. You're renewing our mind. You're renewing our soul. And Father God, we pray, Lord God, to those brothers and sisters that we have, Lord, who need physical healing right now for them, even for their loved ones. Lord, we declare, Lord God, and we claim your promise that you are the God who heals. Lord, you are willing and able to heal us. So we claim right now, in the name of Jesus, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. I am healed. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we heal. Lord, we touch every heart. Lord God, every heart. Lord, every artery, every vein. Lord, even our kidney. Every kidney. Lord, even our lungs, oh God. Lord, would you heal it? Lord, even any infirmities and diseases.
Jesus, oh God. Lord, even any bone structure, Lord God, you heal it. You bring healing. You bring restoration in the name of Jesus. Even, Lord God, healing, healing of the womb, healing from barrenness, oh God. Healing from barrenness in the name of Jesus. The Lord says in Isaiah 54, Shout, O barren woman, shout for joy. Because I believe light will break through in your situation. Light will break through. Shout for joy. Shout for joy, says the Lord your God. Shout for joy. Because healing is coming. Breakthrough is coming. Restoration is coming. Restoration is coming. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing is impossible with our God. Science may say, medical findings would say, this is your illness. This is the result of your love test. But this is what the Word of God says. By the wounds of Christ, you are healed. That's the Word of Christ. Purchasing that healing on the cross. And the name of Jesus is above your sickness, is above your situation. The name of Jesus is above all our situation. Jesus has authority over our sickness, over our situation. That's why Jesus, we receive, we receive that healing. We receive restoration. We receive freedom today, God. We receive freedom today. Lord, even right now, I can sense even any demonic oppression, any strongholds in our lives. In the name of Jesus, you are free. You are free. You are free. We arrest that spirit. We arrest that oppression. We arrest that sickness in the name of Jesus. And we declare healing. Shalom. 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 We let loose. We let loose, oh God, the spirit of healing upon this place. We let loose your joy. We let loose your joy, Lord. We receive your power in the name of Jesus. Can we give the Lord a big, big shout of praise and thanks for what he has done. For what he has done. And as we close our worship service, let's just pray this priestly blessing upon the church. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face towards you. The Lord give you peace. Peace give you shalom. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. The way things are supposed to be. We receive that benedictory prayer even for our loved ones, even for us. Thank you for the miracles to your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for joining our worship service. You know, we, let's take this time to engage one another. We could continue engaging, talking to one another, praying, telling our situation to our friends and brothers and sisters in the church. God bless you all. Looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. The Lord's grace and mercy be upon us all. God bless.